Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to another, another of our Webinar Wednesdays hosted by California State University Bakersfield's Small Business Development Center. So good afternoon again, I'm Kelly Bearden. I'm the director of the center and we're here to welcome you today to another number 124 of our Managing the Small Business, your small business beyond the pandemic webinar. So got a lot to go over today. A lot of the tools that we've been barely scratching the surface on, a lot of the programs get into a little more detail. No guests today, so you're stuck with me the entire time. Uh, hopefully Maureen will jump in and sa save me at times. But let's get started. And today is July 27th, 2022. So today we're going to look at some small business tools that we may have neglected for a little bit, but tools that we want to make sure that you're aware of that help you grow your business. And every small business needs a tool. So um, for your craftsmen in your particular business, we'll have some that we share today. We'll throw possibly everything but the kitchen sink at you, but we have some that'll be coming later on and we hope to discuss those. So we'll get into the tools that are available now. A lot of the tools that might be coming down the road now as we ease out of the pandemic and start moving on to bigger and better things. You know, our Capital Corner today is going to look at a couple of programs that are still kind of lingering out there, but look at a key financial ratio. We were going to look at a few, but one of them is in particular one of interest, I think, this during these times of raising interest rates. And also, in the last hour, we did get breaking news that the Federal Reserve did have a 0.75% increase. So 75 basis points added to the cost of borrowing money for banks and something about these banks. And when it, their costs go up, they pass them on to you and I, uh, to consumers, to small businesses and other customers that are bank customers. So obviously that 0.75%, a 75 basis point increase that just happened in the last hour or so will be passed on to higher interest rates to consumers and small business owners. And also big business owners, I might add. So uh, our economic corner will look at the interest rates going up and look at a little bit about inflation. We'll talk a little bit about something that we haven't talked about, and that's stagflation. So we will look at stagflation of all things today. Uh, we'll have our marketing moment with our marketing maven, Maureen. Marketing maven Maureen will come in with, with a marketing tip for the day. And who knows, you know, I've been really, I've been really kind of... Uh, surprised at the number of cyber attacks that are happening to small businesses. In cybersecurity, we covered it a few months back, but it might be another area to revisit again, maybe uh, in a more frequent column. Maybe we should have, in addition to our capital corner economic, uh, capital quarter economic corner marketing moment, cyber saver, cyber second, a cyber second to keep your data safe. So anyway, a lot going on there. You need to keep stay, keep and stay vigilant on a lot of the things that are going on in the security world and what is happening. So maybe that is one of the resources that we can provide moving on down the road. We're also going to provide an update on remaining programs. As always, put your questions in the Q&A box. The Q&A box will be there. We'll also have our chat box available to where we'll put in a lot of the resources that we talk about today. Some of the tools will go in there as well. We will have a recording of this that will likely be sent out uh, no matter how bad I do today. So uh, it'll be sent out along with the links to the tools in an email that comes out usually later this week. So we have those resources to offer you your questions at the end of today's webinar. And first, we'll start with a very modest poll. And so since we're talking about interest rates and inflation, a lot going on, uh, just a very simple interest, simple question on inflation today. And launching the poll is the Fed would like to see interest, how much inflation per year? So right now we're rounding around 9%. Would the Fed like to see zero? Would it like to see 2% or would it like to see 4% per year? One of those are, is the actual term that, that the Fed feels is natural for the economy to grow, for demand to still be there and driving demand. So 
a little bit of inflation, zero inflation, a little bit more than a little inflation, which of those would the Fed like to see in any given year as an inflation guideline? So again, your choices are zero, two, and 4%. And for the question of the Fed would like to see how much inflation during a given year, how much would they like to see? Zero, two, or 4%, with 68% of you participating, we're gonna end our only poll question of the day. And we'll share the results. And boy, you people nailed it today. Yes, 2% is the guideline each year that the Fed sets up for inflation that they would like to see. And for many, many, many years, we have been somewhere around 2%, maybe slightly higher, uh, but nothing to the over 9% that we're looking at on an annual basis right now. Okay, so thank you for participating. Let's move on to kind of our open programs that we have and see what's happening there. So one of the things that we have open right now is we have open a program through for the California Performing Arts Grant. And that particular program uh, is one that, you know, allows certain nonprofits to go in and access funds, grant funds on a first come first serve basis back on, well, back on uh, June the 30th is when it opened. Again, it's first come, first serve. So one of the things that you really kind of need to look at is that is the, uh, actually the NACE codes, the SIC codes, if you're interested in that, you need to go in and you need to see if that's the funding, if the, you're in the business that they're really wanting to fund. So, you know, we will, uh, you know, we will continue to put this out to you. We've gone to the website the last couple of years. We'll add it in our links. I'm sure Maureen is working on it right as I speak. Um, as I keep trying to get rid of this annoying poll question that's taking up so much of my screen today. And there it goes. Okay. So also the California Dream Fund program. The California Dream Fund program, again, a lot of things we've talked about it. We're going to talk about a different angle from it today, maybe uh, slightly different, give you a little results on what's happening. The State Small Business Credit Initiative, we're going to have a lot going on in that for interest, businesses interested in uh, wanting to secure capital. I'll even give you an example on how that might work for you. For example, well, let's do it now. So the State Small Business Credit Initiative, you might recall, is going to have startup, investment, and other forms of money. It is going to be split between the iBank out of the Office of the Small Business for the state of California, and also the Pollution Control Financing Authority. And the Pollution Control Financing Authority is out of the Treasurer's Office. And one of the programs out of the Treasurer's Office is one that is called a collateral security loan. So what you might have is you might have, uh, as I got yesterday, an inquiry from an older client. Well, he's a younger client, but he's been an existing business owner. And he wants to purchase another business, a business that would augment his other businesses that he has. And it, collateral became a particular issue on that particular loan. So with the collateral uh, being limited in some acquisitions, they have a program that will actually recover and actually fund part of that collateral shortage. So when we get into looking for capital, you know, there's a few things that uh, lenders want to see, and one of them is collateral. They want that security generally one for one. So if you have a million dollar business, they're generally going to want to see a million dollars. So when you come up short, this is a new program that is going to be coming out of this that would cover the collateral aspect if all other, all other uh, aspects of that loan look good. So just an example of what's going to be coming up with the state small business credit initiative and how it might work in the mini programs. And we will have speakers out of the treasury's office and the iBank coming up as soon as they are closer to releasing these programs that hopefully are going to be happening about any day. So we have our Kern County micro grant program and they are open, open until November the 30th. So we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Mono County has their grant and forgivable loan program. And we've been directing you to see either of the Jeffs, if you're in Mono County, Jeff Simpson, the economic development director, 
for Mono County, and they uh, use the fine services of Jeff Lucas, who uh, I believe is in Lake County, but it does a lot of contract work for them on this program. So one of the Jeffs will help, gladly help you and, and get you funded if you are in Mono County. So the employee retention credit, we've been talking that it closed at the September 30th, 2021. That was the last quarter that you could actually apply for the credit. One thing though, you can go back and apply retroactively if you qualify. That's right, if you are eligible and you have uh, resources, we're still talking to people that are going back and doing this where it's been nearly 10 months now. So the, the first quarter for the particular program, the employee retention credit was December, 2020. Usually people, when they go back now, what they do is they work with their accountant, they work with their payroll company. You have to really watch it because some of the fees that I've seen some of these contractors, particularly the payroll contractors utilize is a percentage of what they get you rather than the actual cost of what it costs them to do the work for you. So, you know, I'd love to be sitting here and saying, gee, you know, we helped you with that, with that loan, you know, uh, uh, since we did that, we'd uh, take, uh, we'll take 20% of that, okay? But uh, our services are free, of course. And even if they weren't, we would still probably charge by the hour um, and charge you what it really costs to get done. So beware of that uh, if you're going looking to go back with ERC. The CalSAVERS Mandatory Employment Program, uh, if you signed up for it, you could sign up for it. Uh, if you have five or more employees, Again, it's not gonna cost you. It's going to be, it's gonna cost you a little bit in some of the work that you have to do and a little bit of the time and accounting for it, but it is for your employees who do not have a retirement program. So this is a retirement program that can follow a younger employee or an older one around to their various jobs and give them the opportunity to grow um, retirement funding as they move between different jobs in their career. So I mentioned that the California micro grant program here in Kern County, our Kern County provides $2,500 for eligible micro businesses. Uh, again, it must be your main source of income. That's one of the key requirements that it has to be your main source of income. You had to have in 2019 had sales of less than 50,000. Uh, you only could have five or fewer employees um, and you cannot have received the California relief grant from Lindustry, either five, fifteen, or twenty-five thousand uh, dollars for that business or another business that you are linked to. So other conditions do apply for eligibility. Um, you know there has been a new updated application that was released released recently. I like released and recently combined. I think I'll move those two words. But there is a new updated application that was released recently. And with that uh, comes uh, kind of an easier process as we, it's probably about the fourth iteration. Um, you know, I like to think that this is another one of those programs where, you know, we're kind of, uh, we're kind of fine tuning the, the boat during the boat race. So it has had some moments to where we've had some changes uh, in the criteria and in the criteria that applicants need to put up. And also uh, right now, we have some of the uh, criteria have been relaxed as far as some of the packaging requirements go. So uh, some of them are easier than they were uh, based on interpretation from the state uh, OSBA on these particular guidelines that help our smallest and most neediest micro businesses. So if your micro business also wants to see how this might work in a bigger picture, we really recommend you talk to one of our consultants free of charge. Um, and you could always call our office 661-654-2856. So the DreamWork grants that uh, California DreamWork program that is part of the regional efforts, the Central California SBDC region has completed now, I believe three trainings. There are more scheduled to meet the program demand. Right now they are scheduled out through, I think October with, if you signed up now, you might get a training program in October. And to do that, you would need to send an email to sbdc at csub.edu. And for that, to receive either five or $10,000 through the California Dream Fund, you need to complete training, a business plan and technical assistance. Uh, 
And then you need to go online to lindustry.com and apply there to receive the five to ten thousand dollars. And oh, what I like to tell everybody is entry in the training program and the in the consulting and the business plan does not guarantee funding. You need to find out more of that as you go through that process or as you look to go through the process. So I mentioned October is when classes are currently uh, uh, available now. So, but you know, if I'm looking at this, I don't think they has to be completed in sequential order. So you don't need to have the training program in order to write the business plan and receive the technical assistance, the one-on-one -on -one consulting through an SBDC accountant or actually a consultant. So what you might consider doing if you have a later training date, a, say an October or a September training class, what you might wanna do is you might wanna reach out and start receiving consulting with the SBDC now. And what you might want to do then is start working on your business plan. There is a business plan that Lindustry uses, but we can actually use that business plan and get it, you going on it. You might want to fine tune it during the class. But then when you complete the class, you would be ready to go and maybe receive your codes and go to Lindustry.com and apply for the five or $10,000 to jumpstart and kickstart your business. So again, one thing that I'm suggesting is maybe receive your SBDC consulting and work on the business plan before you have, uh, you know, you go through the training class if that applies to you. I believe from our region, we've had our area here in our, uh, our current Inyo and Mono counties, we've had about 20 people that have gone through the training so far. And I'm interested in finding out more from them. So if any of them are out there, you know, if you have any anything uh, as far as uh, for that I might add and might be able to help new applicants into the program, feel free to reach out to me. So as I mentioned at the beginning, you know, all of our training topics, all of our, almost all of our webinar Wednesdays since the pandemic, there's an exception of one or two, um, are on YouTube. So you can always go back and when we do focus on a particular speaker on a particular topic, you can go back and find those that are referenced there. So here the number is the webinar number. Today we're on number 124 and obviously today is July 27th. So uh, going back and if you want more details on the California Dream Fund, go to our, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe for crying out loud. And also go back in and actually you know, um, jump in and look at some of the offerings that might interest you. You'll be glad to know that we've taken out the introduction in many of those. And also Maureen has provided timestamps for maybe the information that you are looking for in that particular, in that particular on-demand webinar. So uh, 117 was the Dream Fund, uh, HR in California. Our last update was back in May 18th with our SBDC consultant, Celeste Young Ramos. Uh, we had our last economist in two months ago, Dr. Mark Evans, uh, who's enjoying his time on the golf course, I'm sure right now, uh, but he'll be back soon and we'll get more on that. Um, in April, I thought we had an ex extraordinarily uh, fine presentation by Bill Britton, head of IT at Cal Poly on cybersecurity and gave kind of a lot of the essentials and basics. And we'll be hopefully doing more on that particular topic as we continue to see problems in that area. March 30th, uh, right before the deadline, we had Cal Savers, uh, their mandatory retirement. So um, Jonathan Herrera, if you wanna learn more about Cal Savers, jump in there. And going back, you see PP, that was pre-pandemic before we had any numbers for them, but there's at least 50 or 75 more. Uh, including one tool that we won't get into more, but you can jump in and find out about all signs go cash flow with Ginny Inholm and did a really a fantastic job on cash flow planning. If you're really interested in cash flow planning, uh, Ginny is a consultant for the Cal Poly Center and did this webinar back for us in 2017. One of the other webinars back then that uh, that I found quite interesting uh, as far as a tool go and related to what we're going to be talking about today is uh, we've done a lot of webinars, particularly in 2013 and 2014, 
on the canvas, the canvas for finding a business model. And we discussed a lot of the aspects of that. There's tons of webinars back there. We even kind of invented our own canvas that worked with the majority of our businesses that are more service type businesses rather than product oriented. And so we have one from Tom Weir back in, uh, I believe, 2018 on the blueprint for small business success. So it's a popular one on there. It's something you can get jump into. And what I'll try to do is I'll try to uh, update this slide with some to go out with Maureen's um, email later this week on all of our resources, on some of the resources of some of the older, older on-demand webinars that might be relevant for what you're looking for today. So let's jump into the economic side of things. Of course, we did note already that the interest rates rose again, uh, but I think it was anticipated that they were going to rise three quarters of a point, 75 one hundredths, same as last month. Last month, it was anticipated uh, 50 basis points or a half a point, so a little bit bigger increase last month. It did in increase the speculation that they might raise it a full point. And that brings in a lot of economists now that are worried that they're going to raise rates too quickly and throw everything into a, a recession. And that is where we get into our term of the day, which is stagflation. And we'll talk about stagflation later. But just a little warm up for stagflation. It's when inflation continues to rise and rise significantly while you have a significant economic turndown. And those are not good combinations. Uh, so, you know, what we're also finding out is in a lot of the lines, what was hot during the pandemic is cold now. And that includes home falling prices and particularly Zoom communities. We see this going on with, say, let's use an example of Boise, Idaho. Boise, Idaho and Idaho in general had lax COVID rules. A lot of people flocked to rural areas that could work remotely. And these communities really, really saw high, high uh, home prices and rents increase significantly. Well, now you're starting to see those areas now turn cold. On another thing that we'll, uh, we'll talk about a little bit later on, the, you know, some of the ratios for finance, you know, uh, maybe a lot of you are familiar with uh, Weber Grills. Weber, Weber Grills. I have a couple of those fine tools, really nice tools, I might add. You got another one on my tool wish list, you know, a Weber Grill, you know, the big, you know, giant vertical smoker. But anyway, uh, they fired their CEO this week. They had record profits during the pandemic. And now that it's 2022, like a lot of home improvement and a lot of things to do with outdoors, they are cold now. People made their investments in those particular areas. They purchased those assets. They created that home infrastructure. And now they're moving on to traveling and other things. So one of the things that was interested in reading about Weber Grills firing their CEO and a few other things was that one thing that they are continuing to do is provide financial ratios to their lenders. So We'll look at that in a little bit under some of our tools, but that is just a couple of examples of things that were very hot during the pandemic. You're seeing it in clothing, you're seeing it with Macy's, you're seeing it with Bed Bath & Beyond that is really struggling and doing everything that they can do to stay afloat. Um, some of the other clothing that was made much more relaxed during 2020 and 2021 is now changed and is not really buying the eye of the consumer. So hot during the pandemic, cold now, in a lot of different areas. And then we hit our, our, our term of the day, stagflation, you know? A couple months back, you know, it was, you know, just inflation. And then it was shrinkflation, but now it's stagflation. And stagflation is that huge concern for those particular areas that we'll talk about soon. But let's first go into our marketing moment with Maureen. And I think I have the right slide here for you, Maureen, that ties into your, your topic today. <laughs> you, we've got a bass and we've got a stag. Is bass inflation next? Oh, my. <laughs> You're killing me today. I am. Yeah. So, I, I, <laughs> all right, let's get started. 
Uh, let's see here. Okay. Well, so I, I always like to look for you know, in, fun and interesting um, things that we can learn, right? Oh, hang on, let me get started here. Marketing wise, there we go. And so I was looking around and what I found was, uh, who doesn't like beer, especially when it's, you know, 105 degrees or whatever, right? Girlfriend of I went over to the coast this weekend and it was like 111 on the apex going over the mountains, it was crazy. So beer sounded pretty darn good. Anyway, what I found was Carlsberg beer. And so what they did was and at the end of this, I'm gonna show you uh, the, the commercial that they came up with. Um, but what they, it was really smart how they went about it. They uh, created a campaign that where they kept building up um, some excitement for it, teasing people with different uh, social media posts. And so the whole thing was they came up with this campaign called Adopt a Keg. And so then the hashtag, as you can see on here, uh, is Adopt a Keg, right? Now, mind you, they did this in throughout Europe, mostly, um, I think it was Denmark, but it was basically throughout a lot of Europe and Malaysia. So you notice over here, um, and the reason this is important is because it, they had different things in, in between Europe and in Malaysia. Um, so this way it helped it with the trending and people could find it. So what I like about this is it's like, hello, where did everybody go? There's this little lone keg on the bar where it's all by itself. Um, anyway, um, so this was their solution because one of the things that was happening is uh, a lot of people you know, go out to pubs there and it's a very social thing. But of course, because of the pandemic, people weren't doing that. And so then uh, they were staying home. So there was a decreasing amount of you know, beer units that were sold uh, you know, all over the place. So, and then of course they wanted to keep their brand awareness up uh, and the image that they had. So during the campaign, what, so let me go to this next one here. So it was adopt a keg, right? Uh, so it supports bars in native Denmark with initiative allowing locals to buy a keg. So that's where the adopt a keg comes in at. Um, the ad personifies this lonely little keg where, where did everybody go? I think I showed you on the last one, where it has a single bead of water, you know, rolling down it like it's all by itself and it's crying, cracked me up. I think I can show you here where, whoops, uh, I guess I can't. Anyway, they got some really good numbers of shares um, and lots of engagement throughout uh, uh, social media when they were doing this. So this was a couple of days after one that I just showed you. Um, and then the other thing was they had specific bars and so forth who would participate with them on it. So they got a lot of, uh, a lot of mileage out of what they were doing. So then here we go. This was another one that Carlsberg put out. So support your pubs, bars, and restaurants. Now they can open again. I kind of looked at it it's like June, they weren't closed down very long. So you fill up your virtual keg with beer you buy from the supermarkets, convenience stores, and e-retailers. Uh, you could read more on Adopt a Keg. The thing with this one is, this uh, this was on Facebook. Notice where they're, um, they, this one was driving people to their website. So you could get a whole lot more information than what you're gonna wanna put on Facebook. And that was very successful with that. Um, now here's one where, uh, Uncle Don's, I think he was in Malaysia. And so he went in the whole thing here where it said how you go about it. Um, and the smart thing was, you'll notice I was kind of laughing uh, that you had up until you know August, end of August to do this. But I think it was like for every, you know, let's see, what is it? For every, you adopt a keg, which gives you two free Carlsberg Pilsner half pints. <laughs> That's a lot of beer if there was a lot of people who were doing that. And uh, it looked like there were quite a few people doing that. So I think that's the last slide I had on that. So let me shift over here and I'm going to, um, hopefully I'm gonna go up. Well, 
report. Let's try this. I don't know, Kelly. I thought I had my, um, <laughs> let me stop sharing for a second. I thought I had my PowerPoint up, or my, um, the, the um, well, I cannot find my YouTube. Well, and I can't find my background. Well, there you go. Phooey. Okay, so. I'll find it here in a second. You just go ahead. Well, I, I guess when it's hot, beer's always a good subject. <laughs> Yes, it is. So, well, let's move on and let's get over to Capitol Corner because that's really where we're headed. So a little bit on Capitol Corner, provide a little bit of capital up, update on what's going on. We have our current Capitol Summit, still no dates released yet. Um, but the, we're going to have them both in, uh, in Bakersfield, the Kern County Capital Summit, which will be about the, uh, we can't say annual because the pandemic put an end to all of our annual stuff, it seems like. But it will be our, probably our fifth Capital Summit in Kern County and our fourth in the Eastern Sierra. So what we'll have is we'll have programs that will be optioned both, uh, you can attend both in person and via the internet. And we'll have dozens of programs, financing options, a lot of things for local entrepreneurs, put you right in touch with the people with the money for the particular program. The presenters share their options and their successes. Um, we get into too much eligibility with a lot of our programs that we talk about. This is designed to show you the successes that work and continue to work with others. So, um, we talked a little bit about that, gave that particular example. So now let's jump into some of our tools that we have for our particular businesses. And, you know, the first tool that I think I'm going to show you today um, is going to be, well, is going to be kind of a, there we are, look at that kind of a formula that I wanna share with you on one of the important things that we're starting to see. And a lot of things, if you've ever wanted to be able to calculate the actual cost of your debt, if you have various different means of doing so. So this is a variation of the weighted average cost of capital. And this is just gonna be a debt example today. Uh, there are some options if you have any equity in your business, if you're incorporated and maybe have some preferred stocks that you pay dividends on. Uh, but for the bulk of our businesses, they mostly dabble in debt. And this is really kind of an example that I'm going to show you of why it's so important as interest rates rise to kind of keep an idea on how much your cost of capital is. So and this can work with both if you're looking for new capital sources or if you're just looking to manage the debt that you have. So in this example, we, we show four outstanding, five outstanding uh, balances for uh, an SBA loan, which is over in the left column, a V for variable funding. So it just went up three quarters of a point. Uh, the next quarter, it will adjust. Uh, the PPP, because we do have some clients who were not able to get all of their PPP fully forgiven, and they have their PPP that they are paying for at 1% interest. Uh, the latest rate that we're using on the SBA 7A loan in this example was 7.5. We had already factored it in the increase today. They also received an economic injury disaster loan in idle for 20000 at 3.75%. Uh, they took out a, during very rough times, they took out a FinTech loan. And whereas oftentimes FinTech loans aren't going to come out and show you that you're paying 27.77%, you really need to know the cost of what it is costing you. Because it really, I have seen them fluctuate between 7% and literally 77%. And generally, there is nowhere in there that says the cost of the interest, the annual percentage rate. They will show you how much they will take each day out of your account over a specific term. And then it has to be calculated by you what is the actual effective interest rate. Uh, 
So by doing this, they don't have to really uh, share with you an interest rate that might scare you, but more so, they also are complying with credit laws where they don't have to show an effective interest rate if it's, if it's amortized in their case on a daily basis or if they actually are um, not actually showing it as an amortized loan, but as a fee that's coming out. The last is credit cards and our weighted average cost of capital. And so that amount is a large amount that we will change in a few moments, but let's just go with its 228. So this is a very leveraged small business here and they're paying a lot in debt. We're not getting into the payment here. We're just getting into what is that effective interest rate that they're, they're paying. And so what we need to do is we need to assign a weight and we assign a weight based on the actual amount, the percentage amount of this total debt of $500,000. So 150,000 of that is 30%. So 30% of that 7.5% shows up over here in what I call the effective rate. Um, since the loan amount's only 34,000 for the 1% the PPP, out of $500,000, it is only 7% amount of the total debt that you have. And then that factor gets over here. So you go down through that entire course and you go through and the credit card debt is the highest. So that one is nearly the highest out of all the debt. Um, it is the highest, $228,000. And then it reflects being 46% of the weight. And that weight gets that factor. So you show here that they're actually, their weighted cost of capital is 12.64%. So why is that important? Well, let's say that if this business would have been able to get qualify for an idle and we could still get idles a few months back, and maybe they would have got an idle to where they could have paid off some of their debt. Maybe they did. And maybe I'm using data, old data. So let's say they got 28,000 of credit card debt and were able to refinance 200,000 of that into this idle. Let's look at the change that that actually makes. Yes, it literally cuts in half the cost of their debt. Since then you're going with a big amount of it, 44% of it, it being the 3.7% idle, it actually lowers that cost down to 6.58%. So why is it important to know that? Well, it's important to know your debt structure if you have multiple debt sources and actually how much it's going to cost and how much it's gonna cost with rising rates. So this could be adjusted maybe even as soon as next week. Maybe you could work on getting rid of this 20.77 with another instrument. Maybe these credit cards, which, you, which now you have freed up some of your availability, make sense in order to reduce this amount since your interest rate on your credit cards is 18.9 compared to your 27.77 for the FinTech loan. So just a tool that you might have, and it just shows you the weighted average cost of capital. We can go into variations if we have time, uh, but we don't. And it involves equity. So equity and debt can actually in, improve or increase this amount. So one of the tools that you've seen us use uh, very frequently is our cash flow forecast. And our cash flow forecast kind of gives you a monthly analysis. Uh, I know we've shared this quite a bit during the pandemic. Uh, it is our favorite tool, at least until we get into our new tools that we hope to have soon. And so for right now, it just gives you the opportunity to forecast what your cash needs are going to be. So this is just the blank form. Uh, we are going to have up soon a short five minute, 10 minute form on how to use this, a little video as part of our future form, our future tools. So we won't go into that right now, but you could also talk to an SBDC consultant, but this is a wonderful way of planning to when you're going to have cash needs. If you're a seasonal, if you're a cyclical business, this is great tools to have in order to project when you're gonna be at your lowest point. Rather than just run out of cash, know when you're gonna be low on cash and that you can make any other changes during those times. So it just takes in your cash for the business, these cash receipts over here. It can come from a variety of sources, cash from the business, sales from the business, collections from those sales, any loan that you might receive, any injection, any owner equity that is put into the business or other routes along those lines. 
And then you just go out to what you're paying out in your particular business and it shows your cash position projected. On a projected basis, you're projecting what your cash position will be for the, maybe the next three to six months, maybe for the next six to 12 months or even longer. Okay, one of our other tools that we have at the SBDC is we have a program called SBDC Net. And SBDC Net is our clearinghouse at SBDC for demographic information, for market research information. I've pulled one that is a little bit old because, you know, I'm getting older and I've learned to delegate. So I don't have a lot of the information that I keep myself. You have to be an SBDC con uh, client in order to receive this information. And for us even to, even if I wanted to, like say I wanted to start a mobile detail, since that's what this is. This is a demographic information of NACE code 81192, which is detail and washes. So let's just say I wanted to do this on my own and I'm not able to even go in and do that because I have to have an SBDC uh, a number and some other information for them to do the work. So there's a clearinghouse that's done, that's down in Texas, deep in the art of Texas. And it is in San Antonio. And what they do is they just crank out these for SBDCs in all 50 states and seven foreign territories. So what we see here is here's the business list report. And so this is kind of a list of my competitors if I'm looking to go into the car wash business. So there shows everything from mobile detail to environmental solutions, to express car washes, to full serve car washes, to mobile car washes. And again, this was taken back in 2014. You'll see the date up here. It also then doesn't provide the latest in information, obviously, but that's not what I'm looking for. So the information it does provide is employees, the totals, how many locations they have. Uh, here's one with six car washes or six truck washes. Um, and also their annual sales volume, their standard industrial code, their NACE code, and also their location by their uh, longitude and latitude. So a little geo work there. So that's kind of information. Some of these will have literally dozens and dozens of people and businesses that are competing in that particular space. This only has a handful that it's came back on in this for Bakersfield, Kern County, California in car washes. So some of the other information, that's a business list. It also will provide a demographic detail, a comparative detail, which will show within you know, one mile, three miles, five miles, the entire Kern County, California and the entire US. So it breaks it down, you know, how many employees are within a certain range, how many business establishments are there, what's the total population. Obviously, if you have a car wash, they're oftentimes driven by convenience, something close to your office, something close to your business, something close to your home. So we get into population and we get into households. Uh, it breaks down the male and female. So it breaks out gender, it breaks out age, it breaks out housing units and housing units by tenure. It breaks out some of the race and ethnicities and some of the uh, um, others as far as information that you get into with marital status, educational attainment, household income. Uh, and also the number of vehicles that are available in that particular area. Obviously, if you're going to put a car wash up, it might be interested to know, you might be interested to know uh, how many vehicles per household are in that particular area. Also, demographics might play in, and some of the other demographics as far as age and population. So just a ton of information that is available with the demographics the demographic detail comparative report. We also have here something a little bit more specific on autos. You know, how many autos are available uh, per household? Is it one, two? You get into some households where there are three and four vehicles listed by a particular address. And so the, the percentage of those within a mile, three miles, five miles, and the entire county for that matter. So a lot of information that you can dive into when you're doing that critical market analysis, when you're doing that critical uh, information and in, in trying to do your assessment on 
um, where you're going to locate a business, where you're going to expand your business, and what business, if it's a business that's worth going into. So we have that, and I think that will clean us up on the particular um, details there. So let's go back and let's reshare. Um, and while we reshare, let me go into another tool that, that we're going to have coming soon. This is on our coming soon tool. So one thing that we are going to have uh, relatively uh, in the near future, we hope, we hope, um, would be this tool right here. And uh, we're expecting it in the third or fourth quarter. And it's another database. And it's really one of the larger databases at universities, it's at our CSB, it's at many other places, a lot of industry expert, but there's some great industry expert research through IBIS World. And this is a very comprehensive database that you can search by industry, by keyword, by country or industry code. Um, you can do by sector and by others. And so there's just becoming a lot of great information that is available. We have SBDC Net. We're going to have uh, research that's available through IBIS World. The city of Bakersfield has launched some uh, tool that is available for businesses there. However, our geographic area covers all of Kern, Inyo, and Mono counties. So we need something beyond that. And so IBS World will actually continue or will start doing that and kind of fill in the blanks that we don't that we get with our SBDC net. So a couple of great tools that I think really help people and really are really beneficial. And um, what's next? So Jumping in next uh, are some of our other tools that we have that are gonna be available. And Maureen, if you can share with us our live plan. One of our best tools that we utilize at the SPDC is in our Central California region. We use a program called Live Plan. It's from a company called Palo Alto Software. For years and years, decades, they've done uh, different variations of business planning, going back to probably disk and templates that you actually worked with. And now what it is, is it's an intuitive uh, live planning tool that uh, is used by, by many of our clients. We have had hundreds of clients that successfully use these. We have a hundred licenses. The pricing on this, I like to start lead with the pricing because we've had so many of our clients that have actually jumped on with us for 60 days why it's free and then jumped on and paid the $20 or $30 a month for whichever version they wanted as they continued to ply in through their business. So it is a tool that is free to new SBDC clients as we work with you, but after 60 days, um, you could have a plan that's complete. We hope that you continue to bring that plan up to date and complete it on a regular basis, that pl critical planning process. So here's a little bit about when we jump into live plans. And this is a program we use both with our senior and our interns. And this is kind of the process of creating a new company. So as again, our entire region has 100 seats. We try to occupy about 30 of those at any given time. At times we have to archive some plans and let other people in. So it's kind of a juggling act, but I think we've been doing a pretty good job at juggling those. But you can jump on and intuitively work with your consultant. You can work with other people around the country, around the city, and you can jump in and you can work on your particular business plan. So it's, as I've mentioned, it's very intuitive. It jumps in and it has a lot of different tools within it. As far as industry research and advice, it has potential financial management and funding sources and other things. So it just asks for a little bit of information at first. Again, if you're an SBDC client, you can work with your SBDC consultant on putting this together. And this live plan, I think, is going to continue to be a great resource. And as we now kind of transition over to, let's see what a finished sample plan might look like. So in looking at a sample plan of how a live plan plan will look like, I will stick with the car wash theme today because, you know, my car is dirty. Um, that's a good reason, I guess. So here's one, Soapy Rides Car Wash. 
And it starts with an executive summary. You know, a lot of times people think when they come in and get a business plan that they need a business plan that's going to be this huge effort to raise tons of money or to raise even a little bit of money is going to require 50, 75 pages. Now, if you're going to bring in investors, you are going to have to have a substantial business plan. But so many of our lending programs now only require you know, a good executive summary, an understanding of a lot of things such as your customers, your management ability, and some of the other highlights that we will show will be a lot of the, um, you know, the mission and the objectives. So as we transition to the next page, you're going to see, then we start getting into the meat and the potatoes of it, a little bit on the ownership. But then after ownership, we start jumping into you know, some of the services that we're going to offer and just really a plethora of services potentially. And then it really jumps into the meat and the potatoes. We get into our market analysis, our market analysis summary and segment. And this is really where it really ties in nicely to the work that we've done with SBDC Net and pulled in a lot of our demographic and marketing information. Now, some of that is available in live plan, but then some of it is available through other sources. And you'll see a lot of the business analysis, the competition and buying patterns that we could have pulled in from other sources. And as we continue through this particular business plan, the market analysis is such a critical part of it because then we're going to get into the implementation. It's great to plan, but it's even better to execute people. And if you have a competitive edge and a sales strategy and a sales forecast, you're a step ahead of the game. And you're moving really toward having that plan that you continue to update and you continue to work as a management tool in your business and not one is that is just put up for uh, moments when you need funding or other financing. Uh, you might need a lease even. You might be moving locations, changing locations, and you need a lease and you need an updated business plan. So updating the business plan and the marketing side of things, including with your metrics and your milestones, always a good thing to have. So that is one of our tools that we have, as I see I'm running behind. So that's a little bit on the, um, the business plan, the live plan. Let's now resume our share and go into some of the tools that we've shared and some of the tools that might be coming soon. Um, we hope to have this fall also. One of the things with live plan and financial projections is it's, it's a difficult process to really project. And one thing that we are really encouraged to hear, you know, might've been on a few weeks ago when we have Craig Howells from Mission Bank on, and he said he's starting to do a lot of projection-based business plan deals now. So financial projections can actually get you a small business loan again. This is unheard of. This went away. This went away 15 years ago. You used to be able, as a startup, to get small business funding if you had a good idea. Um, still, there was some of it happening over the last uh, decade or so, but not to near the degree that it used to. So financial projections through Live Plan. Uh, there's some new tools and new works that we're going to be doing and new talent that we're bringing to the region and bringing to our individual center that will help us identify and really get those financial projections tuned in for those that are looking for capital. Uh, our tool wish list also, you know, got to have more tools for the tool chest. Hey, we got a bigger toolbox this time. I like that. Uh, it's going to also have ISBN world or ISIB world, actually. It's a little bit different, but uh, demand metrics is one that we talked about that is being utilized uh, by some centers through the region. I believe Cal Poly does. It's a phenomenal tool. Uh, it's a tool for bigger businesses that have bigger projects and really those that really jump into it and get into it. It's, a, it's an amazing tool. So we're going to also have some more short topic videos to identifying the use of these tools and how we can actually uh, do something. Um, also, our student intern groups are coming back and working on various projects. So we'll be working in certain areas such as finance and also crowdfunding and many more areas. But beyond the pandemic now, this fall, we should have our student intern teams come back. And there's a lot of opportunity to do a lot of different things that we haven't done in the past. 
So lastly, I'm gonna just leave you with one thing here. And this was um, just kind of with our rates rising today. It's just something to keep in mind. Your variable loans are increasing. And those are again are gonna be some of the ones that we used in our dis discussion point today. So most of our SBA and FinTechs, our lines of credits and credit cards and credit card balances and some auto mortgage loans and some of our personal loans, those are impacted by today's rate increases. We're gonna be back next week. And next week we will have with us our special guest, Morgan Clayton. Morgan is the founder of Teltech Security. He is a community and business leader. Always great to have Morgan in webinar Wednesday. Looking forward to next week, number 125. So with that, let's jump and see if there's any questions. Uh, first, we'll hit the chat box and we'll see the California Nonprofit uh, Performing Arts Grant link is there if you're interested in that, as along with Mono County and the Kern County Dream Fund. And also the webinars are all in there in your chat where you can grab those. As we jump to our Q&A box now, let's see, Q&A, uh, you will get a recording. The I think I probably mentioned this after the question was asked. But there will be an email coming later this week of this recording and also the links. Um, the last question is, have you heard anything about idle coming back to finish funding everybody that didn't get the increase? I think about 48 senators have complained to SBA. I have not heard about idle. Now, idle would come back. Um, the COVID idle, the COVID-19 idle. Uh, so... That one, I do not believe is coming back. I have not heard that there's much traction. Um, 48 senators have been complaining, but um, I believe that money is being moved elsewhere so or is out of money. And it would really take Congress to fund more money. I know everybody didn't get that increase and that is a real problem, but I have not heard any traction on COVID idle coming back. Now, there are some idols going on with drought and with wildfire. There's idols that are happening to economic injury disaster loans with other disasters. And there will be idols that continue, but they will be different disasters rather than the COVID-19 uh, idol disaster. So, so that is that. Okay, that is what we got for you. Thank you for joining us for Maureen. I'm Kelly. We'll be back next week with number 125. Everybody have a great week. We'll see you then.